Compound interest is something we've known about for years. So this is, this is old stuff, but we haven't dealt with it for a while. So I want us to go over um, three quick subpoints underneath compound interest that's going to form the foundation of when you think about when you've got an investment or a bank account or you're paying something off, it's very important. It's kind of foundational. Um, so let's remember first, what is the formula for compound interest? I'll give you a clue. It also, like other things in this topic, starts with an A, but it's a capital. Um, so what's it stand for, by the way? A for, it's not area. Amount. <laughs> amount, thank you. The amount you end up with, um, you start with some quantity. Does anyone remember what's the quantity that you start with called? It starts with a P. Principal, Principal with an A, okay. Um, and then we're going to multiply by them stuff, right? What do we multiply by? Think carefully, the compound interest what formula. One plus, one plus R. Okay, now there is a formula that just has an R in there. I'll come back to that one in a second. But for compound interest, and this is why I thought um, our example with Lawrence and Julian is a nice one to go to. Sorry, I keep on, I don't know why I've put this so far away. Um, the example that we just did, right? There was a kind of one plus R happening for Julian's income, right? There was the one, and then this R, how much this thing increased by every time, was 15%, right? So the example that we gave here was. This ends up being 1.15, which would be a pretty phenomenal interest rate for a bank account. But anyway, that's what we get here. But then we might have our money in the bank account for some amount of time, not just one year or two years or something like that. So then we need a power up here, right? Yeah, so put 1 plus 0 0.15. Y yes, exactly, which gives you this. Yeah. Oh, now that makes sense. Yeah. Um, what's, what do we usually call the index? Usually n. n for like a number of time periods, okay? All right, yeah, question. N plus T. Ah, okay, so we'll, let's come to this idea. This is like the basic compound interest formula. Basic compound interest formula. Um, somewhat hilariously, this is actually on the reference sheet. So if you're like, wait, what is this again? It's, it's, it's there. I didn't tell you much about it, but there it is, even though it was something we learned years and years ago. But we have to modify this in certain ways based on time, okay? And that's where this next point comes in, right? So compounding period. Let's actually think about an example here. Um, let's say we have an interest on a bank account of say 5%. So what this means is you put 100 bucks in your bank account, every year they'll give you 5% of that, right? Which I guess we would calculate as $5, but that's only if you do it once. If you look once at the $100 in a year, okay? We would say that 5% per annum actually converts to something different based on how frequently you compound, right? So 5% would be your interest rate, okay? But then you might say, well, I might compound more frequently than once a year. I might do it once a month. Um, does anyone know how often banks actually do it? Every day. Every day. They only pay it monthly, but they will, they will actually do the calculation every single day, okay? So we have to take this 5%. You don't get 5% every single day. You get a small share of that 5%. Right? So 5% divided by 365. 5% divided by 365. So this is 5% divided by 365 per day, right? Now, this is important because it's going to affect what our R is and it's also going to affect what our N <coughs> is, okay? So, for example, um, if we say, let's pick a number of years, like for three years, okay? If I would just go to this formula, and just say, I'm going to put in all of the uh, bits and pieces that I know. What did I say? Let's just start with $100, okay? So our amount might equal $100, there's our principal. We would say there's the one plus our rate, 0 0.05. And then we would say, well, N would be however many years you were in there, three years, okay? But if we compound daily, our numbers all shift. Right, um, our principal still stays the same. The one is still the same, it's just part of the formula. But like we just said, that 5% per day changes this R that we're putting in there, right? So I would write 0 0.05 divided by 365 in there, right? Because you're only getting a 365th worth of that interest every single day. Now, not only is that changed, but you're doing this so many more times. You're doing it 365 times per year. So then this is gonna be three lots of 365. We're not gonna worry about leap years and that kind of thing, okay? Don't 
Yeah. Make sense? So the amount of interest you get each time is so much tinier, but you do it more frequently. Now I was wondering, could you get your calculators out if you haven't already? And at your table with the person beside you, can one of you go ahead and work out this first value? And then can the person next to you work out the one underneath? What do we get for each one? So we're going to get a yearly one and a daily one. We'll wait for a second. I'll get the yearly one first if that's okay. The yearly one's just this first one here. 7625. So by the way, just before we go into the next answer, I think Parent was there first actually. He was there before the other one, but um, we we kind of bake into this process approximation because we're dealing with dollars and cents, right? So I think you said 7625, but I'm going to round this to the nearest cent. Okay. Um, and then, okay, Parent, go ahead and give us the other number. 116.182237. 182237. Okay, so I'll get the sense to two decimal places there, um, and I'll write that again, but I'm approximating. Okay, fantastic. So we went from uh, yearly to daily, and the difference ended up being, well, that looks like, um, in, in terms of raw terms, right, it's like 40 cents-ish, 42 cents, in fact. Um, but, but when we think about the difference in the actual interest calculated, right, that $15.76 versus $16.18, it's actually a fair proportion. Remember, the interest rate hasn't changed at all. It's just how frequently we calculate it, okay? So please watch very carefully when you get given questions. They'll specify the compounding period, um, and that will change the numbers you put into the formula, okay? Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. Happy times? All right. Wait, sorry, say it again. What happens if it's a leap year? Actually, that's a good question to pose. I wasn't going to mention it here, but I might as well. Um, over the last few topics, maybe you want to draw yourself up like a teeny little table over here. We have been developing in each topic um, what we call a model. Right? Um, we use models to help us understand a situation. So uh, let's think about Okay, when we were doing differentiation, maximum, that kind of thing, um, one of the topics we very briefly looked at was motion, like objects that move, right? It's like, I take an object, throw it in the air, right? So for example, I might give you something like, say this. Hmm. Um, if we were talking about motion, when you see that letter X, what does that usually denote? Displacement, Displacement very good. Like, where is the position of something? Um, we might say V for velocity or A for acceleration, that kind of thing. Um, and when you see this, the T stands for time, right? So this guy here, I wonder if you can picture, this is a face down, concave down parabola, right? So it's like, oh, I throw an object up in the air and then it comes back down. Now, a ball will move very close to that, or an object of anything, right? But not exactly, like wind resistance, that kind of thing. It's just a model, but it's a pretty good one, right? Um, what about when we're looking at uh, continuous random variables? Um, we gave you guys a formula, which was a model of the normal distribution. Do you remember that? It was a function of z. Do you remember that? Oh boy, we're going back towards before holidays, right? Uh, I'll help you out. There's going to be a one on root 2 pi, is this ringing bells, right? You're like, oh, this was awful and gross, right? And I think we had what? E to the, hmm. There was like a, do, do you remember? Yeah, it was, I think from memory, it's like minus, actually, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it from memory because I don't trust my memory. It's a, it's the minus a half Z squared. Do you remember that? Right? Okay, well, I'm getting to that, right? Now, my point here is, this gives you like the perfect bell curve, right? And real life is not nice and neat and perfect like that, but it's very, very close. It's close enough to be useful. So now here, we're thinking about compound interest, right? Compound interest. And we've got this guy, this guy, which is, well, if you were to graph this, we actually sort of flagged this on Tuesday. If you were to graph it, what would it look like? It would not look like a face down parabola. It would not look like a bell curve, what this looks like. Say it again. An it's an exponential, right? Like there's some number in here, like 1.15, as our example was here, or, or two or three or whatever. And then this power of n, as you increase, this thing just skyrockets, right? Year, right? Say that again. Each year it increases. Each year or each day or each, yes. each time period, right? Now, this is coming to Max's question, right? 
what about leap years? Well, this doesn't take leap years into account as I've just said it, but it is close enough that it can be useful, right? And if we really wanted to, we could change this to 365.25. And then you can be like, what about leap minutes and leap seconds, which exist by the way, they're a thing. They're like, yes, but this is close enough to be useful. Make sense? Okay. Last point, and then I'm going to set you loose. All of the things we've talked about right now, they all assume things get bigger, right? You put money in the bank, you hope, you hope that when it comes out, there's more of it, right? But that's not always the case. What is depreciation? What does that mean? It something depreciates in value. Something depreciates in value, <laughs> which is true. I've used the word in my definition. Can we not use the word in the definition? Uh, Moe, what are you thinking? Okay, so... So in terms of the formula, here's the formula here, right? Um, I will just change it, right? It is, instead of plus, it's minus. So instead of 1 plus r, it'll be 1 minus r. But I wonder, like, in what situations does this happen? Why is my thing losing value? It's when something that you purchase or something tangible or not intangible, when it, when the value of that de de uh, decreases over a period of time, very good. So did you catch that? It's super important you get that idea, not just the numbers. It's when something that, for example, you purchase an asset of some kind, if it, <laughs> if it gets lower in value over time, rather than increasing in value, right? So generally, you did say some cars, right? If you've got some special vintage car and you like never drive it anywhere, you just look after it and all that kind of thing, maybe that will increase in value. But by and large, we buy cars to use them. And as you use them, they get beaten up, the engine just degrades over time. So you're like, this five-year-old car, is worth less than this brand new car, right? So this minus here, let's just have a think of an example. Let's use this 15% um, this that we just talked about, right? What if an object was losing 15% of its value over time? What would this become? Um, <laughs> I, I own a Toyota Corolla. I bought it for about $28,000, okay? It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great car, okay? Now, if I were to say it lost 15% of its value over time, then it's going to be one take away, one take away what? 0 0.15, right? And then to the power of however long you own the car, right? Now, what's this going to become in here? 28,000? One take away 0 0.15, what's that equal to? 0 .0 0 0.85? 0 0.85? Okay, now this guy is still an exponential curve, but it doesn't look like this, does it? Uh, think carefully, right? What's happening to my graph? Huh, okay, so, so Will's got it, right? And actually, because so many of you had some trouble with this, I would love for you to draw this underneath where you've written depreciation, okay? If you draw yourself a set of axes, right? Where we know what a normal exponential curve looks like. It starts low, goes high, okay? This is gonna do the opposite. Starts high, goes low, but in this particular way, right? Um, it's gonna sort of drop toward this, and it's gonna slow down as it goes, right? The first year, the first 15% that it loses, um, you guys have a calculator and I don't, what's, what's that gonna be worth? Um, what's 15% of 28,000? I don't actually know what it is. So 10% is 2,800, half of that is 1400, so 1400 plus 2800, which is 4200. There we go. Okay, some nice teamwork there. Okay, so it loses 4200 the first year, right? But then the year after that, it doesn't lose that much because the car is worth less. So 15% of less will be less, right? Um, I guess it'd be. 15% of less will be less. Yes, do you like that? That was a technical way of saying it, okay? So the only problem is, coming back to Max's idea, right? This is a model. This is not actually what's going to happen in reality. After a certain number of years, even though this thing approaches zero, my crawler will literally be worthless, right? Like I'd have to pay someone to take it away because it'd just be like scrap, right? Yeah, maybe. Okay, very little. Um, if I can actually get it to the scrap metal place, right? Which might be difficult. So does this make sense? Uh, these are the key ideas we need to keep in the back of our minds. We've, we've met them before, but I wanted to refresh your memory.